Today, we are all much smarter about mental health. We have enough technology to study the brain, to do fMRI and neuroimaging, and actually see physical alterations that happen within our brains. And things are indeed happening. When it comes to depression or anxiety or other such mental health disorders, it is now sort of well understood that, you know, you can't just snap out of it. The brain changes physically as well as in terms of neurochemistry. Depression by itself is one disorder where experts are constantly learning new things every day and finding therapies and therapeutics as well. This study has one such finding where scientists have realized that something happens to the brain even in kids that can potentially indicate risk for depression. So it turns out that the brain expands nearly twofold in a very specific area with specific parts of the brain encroaching on other parts and this expansion of this network indicates a strong risk for depression. This part of the brain is called the salience network and it is linked to what else but reward processing. One of the most amazing things technology has given us is the fMRI or functional MRI imaging. Here, people's brains can be observed in real time, much like recording a video, while they go about their natural lives, while they are thinking. And this technology captures brain signals and brain activity. So we are able to tell what parts of the brain gets activated for what kind of things people are thinking and doing. The salience network in our brains is responsible for salient stimuli or stimulus to the brains that sort of stand out. It is also responsible for a lot of complex functioning, including communication, processing cognitive functions, self-awareness, emotional regulation to an extent, how we behave in a society among other human beings, and reward processing. This region's entire function and what all this region and this network is responsible for is of course unclear, as is the case with most of our body and our brains. But this one mainly is responsible roughly for sensory inputs, emotions and behavior, this network of the brain. Using fMRI imaging, the team found that in those with depression, this salience network is twice as large. It is enlarged and the boundaries of this brain network starts to impinge into the areas of other brain networks. And this is of course when compared to healthy people. The team from Cornell studied the brains of over 140 individuals who were on average about 41 years of age, but all of them were clinically diagnosed with severe depression. They found that in the salience network among those with depression, the size had expanded nearly twice. And this expansion of this network stayed stable over time, growing and was unaffected by changes in mood and behavior and life experiences. So in those with depression, this enlarged size of the salience network has been identified. But here's what is most interesting from the study, right? This, this expansion, this doubling in size of the salience network started showing in children even before depressive symptoms started showing subsequently when they became teenagers or when they reached adolescence. Long-term measurements were made over 60 times in just a span of 18 months and it showed the expansion of the brain steadily over time and even among kids it indicated a propensity for depression and indicated a risk for it. There are more details in the study of course and it will be linked below and if you're interested you can read it but we're not going into those technical details for this video. One such interesting detail was that the severity of depression was associated with changes in the size of the network. Their work is also a great proof of concept to show that a method of fMRI called precision functional mapping works well for understanding brain regions that are involved in depression and targeting these regions to understand them better. But the major finding that still stands out is that expanded salience network is associated with depression, including the onset of depression. So the expansion appears before depression comes and therefore the expansion predicts it. This enlarged network size can tell that the person at some point might get depression in their lives and this is a huge blessing in terms of therapeutics and treatments that we can now work towards. This was an early study exploring different parts of the brain with different techniques 
and of course much more studies are needed these are still initial steps but the study definitely takes us one step closer to understanding how depression works in the brain and this is important because depression is one of those mental health disorders that is rapidly increasing and is poised to become a major public health problem across the globe.